we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. This is Voices of Agora. It's a Paragon podcast. It's a delayed episode 12, but we are back. I am your host, Another Notch, and joining me today is my lovely co-host, Shane Lynch. How are you, my friend? I'm good, man. How are you? I, uh, You know, doing well. We had a, I had a really, really solid last week. Uh, of of Paragon gameplay, we had an amazing event. I mean, we'll talk about the Agora's Rising Six, which was the best Agora's this Rising. So good, so good. Shane, how are you, man? Tell me about tell me about your week in Agora. <laughs> Sorry, my chat just ended me up. Um, it's been a really good week, man. The stream's been going really well, way better than I ever thought. Uh, been very supportive. Uh, so that's very good. And of course, the core is rising, and we're officially officially en route with uh, with Paragon Masters. Yep. We just had a meeting with them today. We're setting stuff in stone. Yeah. I mean, it's only what oh, about uh, a week, about a, almost exactly a week. Yeah, uh, exactly a week next Tuesday. Yeah. Um, the gate point two seven has been amazing. Um, point two seven been has been. It's been other than uh, we'll talk about it as we go on the sidecar. Yeah, but, but this um, patch but for I've me... I've had a really good week, not only personally, but also online as well. I, I think this patch has made this game... is With with patch point two seven. this is one of those games... Everybody asks, do you think this game will compete with League or Dota? you get the cursor Dota? off of my nose? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you Always think do, do you think this game will compete with League or Dota? Not anytime soon. No, 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 no. But with this patch, and I feel the direction they're taking it, this is a game that I could see not having numbers like league and dota and having because, a player base like it i see what you're saying because the game caters to those much more competitive yes natured people unlike yes. smite and heroes which gravitated especially heroes much more towards the casual base right this game clearly and and and, and we're, we'll talk about the blog post later uh i believe it was mr super steve as i like to call him uh steve superville uh even said we are trying to nurture a competitive game yes and they're which, doing so far a great job yes which point two seven has set a, a a very great foundation upon which to do so minus some ball drops which we're going to talk about now that we've had about a week and have a half to play yet? it uh I, when i was when i was 14 i was 14 late, i was a were, late dropper you were a, you were a late dropper, dropper. <laughs> <laughs> you were not an early bloomer. I was that's not an early either, bloomer. You're either an early bloomer or a late dropper. Or a late dropper. That's how this one works out. <laughs> now that everybody's learned something about me, um, let's jump into the news this week. So last week, the, the episode just kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. So we've decided there was there, – and there was no news last week. We got Chimera. Chimera had some major issues, he, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Uh, but this week, we got a new state of the game from uh mr superville steve superville uh and they, they broke down the free beta weekends they talked about what has happened in the past month this is what's happened in the past month for agora take for a deep Paragon. breath you got a lot of talking we've had two free beta weekends richter matchmaking rework draft mode tank crit caster changes a kalari rework Meta changes, which is point two seven, and the death of the death of the I was death ball. That you were going to go Ace Ventura style and say all of it in one breath. I did. I would have passed out. <clears throat> I, I would have died. Okay. Weekly and affinity card packs, player rating system, Paragon community highlight, in-game tips and loading screen hints for new players, victory cinematics, yeah, skins, mostly start, mostly recolors, and tons of debug fixes. Debug Duh, fixes. debug fixes. <laughs> So a ton has happened in a month with Paragon. Who um, drinks water like this? I just realized I'm like, 
only you. Only people who watch this on YouTube are going to see what you're doing, by the way. That's fine. Um, but Big shout out to you, uh, you uh, iTunes and uh, Stitcher listeners. Heck yeah, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But um, So the big thing, of course, is we finally got an announcement date for uh, Open Beta. August they've been 16th. Very open about it. Yes, they've been very open about Open Beta. August 16th. Uh, what do you think about... I'm going to sneeze. Oh, I sneezed. I'll have to edit that out. So one of the big things coming that they've talked about talked about is Open Beta, which is coming August 16th. Um, what are your thousands. thoughts? What are your thoughts so, on that? My thoughts are, regardless of the set date, whether it's August 16th or whether it was like March of next year, I think certain things being implemented into the game need to happen shortly before or at open beta for it to be for me to consider it a the game in a healthy enough state to be an open beta what are those things uh better match maybe not a rank maybe not ranked maybe not ranked but significantly better match system matchmaking system because right now we've talked about it everyone knows it's not that good it's it's bad right now and when, it, when it's bad in the sense that it, it it's very bad at putting you in even matches evenly skilled matches between the teams so i um, now so so that being said what you just said there mm -hmm. i, I want to say with 0.27 i do feel like my matches have gotten a little bit better because so of the mine. drafting system i agree uh, that there, there's still its issues i'm not going to say that it's fixed but i do feel like 0.27 was a step in the right direction yeah, there were some like indirect thing there were things that were implemented that indirectly helped it the right. draft Right. was a big one and i th and i think the the way you have to play the game differently now yes people you have to play much smarter in order to like have a game that goes well yes and not but, get stopped. but matchmaking definitely needs to be fixed what else yes. is there any other other um, big things you think need to be changed the spectator client needs to be well refined the Which... uh the like report mute system and um lo i think chat lobbies we need chat lobbies we need we need uh we need in-game lobbies um, what are a couple other things I would like to see before open beta? Uh, a, and this goes along with the matchmaking fixes, a like duo queue only sort of thing, like like a team a team queue versus uh everything else. Right. If you're like gonna queue as five, you have to wait to be grouped as five or at least like a four team uh, a team queue system. Uh, I'd also love uh, Sel Wong just pointed out trade hero system, but I think that will come with ranked play. I don't think that's needed when the game goes into open beta. A what hero system? Trade hero. So in the draft mode. Oh can, yes, I can, think that I no, I think that needs to be an open beta. I don't think that needs to be. Before, I, think, I absolutely, I wholeheartedly think that needs. That's that's crucial to the competitive. If 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 Epic wants us to use their in-game draft system, uh, add they need they need to add spectator cl uh, cl uh, spots to it, which I know that they're. I'm sure they will. Right. Get eventually. Of the eleven um, and twelve. The eleven, 11 and 12, twelve spectator client, whatever. Right. It needs to happen uh, for customs. But if they want us and to use their in-game drafting system when when competitive tournaments are being run, then they have to allow that. They absolutely have to allow it where the heroes are picked and then and then afterwards each teammate like Dota clicks on their corresponding hero and everyone's a happy camper. Right. Otherwise, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to use third party. Someone's gonna have to. Uh, there's a huge opportunity, by the way, guys. I'm surprised someone hasn't done this yet to make a third party website where people can go and use that exact same thing. So you, you mentioned toxicity and some of that. St they did they did put out a big uh -huh. uh, uh, blog post about toxicity, about dealing with AFKers, and there's going to be a brand new system. Um, that we're introducing a new automated AFKer lever system with 0.2.8. So this will actually catch oh, people who are serial le levers. A pause and feature. A pause feature. Yes. A pause feature and... If someone in your game DCs, after like three minutes of them being DC'd, the game doesn't count and everyone can leave. Yeah. So they are they are doing a lot of stuff when it comes to fixing toxicity and, and whatnot. But yes, those are all fixes that need to come. I think uh, the, the thing with, with, with open beta for me is the game's not live yet. I'm still expecting major changes to come when the game goes into yeah, open big, beta. I think big changes. Like, um, like, like 0.27 style yes. changes that yeah, yeah which and they, but they so with the with the the state of the game blog yes, post I you guys didn't hear that i apologize if you did with the state of the game blog post we also they also also, all, la, 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 also talked about development cycles and their uh, their look on it but which is a lot of technical stuff the one thing i want to talk about is what they're actually looking at 
They're looking at the draft mode impact and how times and if matches have been fairer. They're looking at match length. With the the match length has gone up quite a bit with 0.27. Uh, there's a, there's some issues which we'll cover here in a little bit because I want to do a breakdown of 0.27 and our thoughts. Um, of course, the toxicity. They're also looking at hero balance. Right now, yes, there's some heroes that I still think are very strong. Twin Blast, for example, I think is easily the best ranged carry in the game at this point in time. Um, and he yes. just he, he outshines everybody else. There are some balance issues, but for me, for the most part, with the changes we just got, with the fighter changes, the caster changes, the game feels way more balanced today yes. than it did prior to 0.27. And plus, we've seen the crit changes and all those things comes. So uh, lots of stuff has happened in with the past month, and there's so many more things coming. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a second. That's a dog. We're going to take a second, and we're going to talk about the hero race before we jump into the new patch. Engage. 2.7.2. So stoked for the next Star Trek movie. When are they going to make a Picard Star Trek movie? Uh, when are they going to reinvent Picard? They're not. Um, so they need to. With the release... They'd have to be very... They would have to get someone very specific I can it has it. to it has to fit that do it that that uh, that so version. with Anyways. with the release of chimera they changed the way the hero race worked um because of the draft again be, yes again because of the drafting <laughs> lobby people we, they knew it was going to be hard for players to get to 10 some people did it uh some people did it strictly pvp somebody did it who's a a, a nice guy a good streamer uh, but he decided to AFK for about nine matches in bot matches, not not PvP matches, but in bot matches. He just stood at the core, illegitimately, illegitimately obtain right while his number team won the first person to get the masters. While his four friends continue to play okay. and, and get him a lot of experience. It's not like he used. It's not like he like had a bot or was cheating or anything. I mean. Right. Using a like in-game hack or anything right. like that, but he broke he the did, rules. He he broke the rules. What he did was wrong, and so they stripped him of his title. They did. Blizzard said, "Nope, not going to happen." They banned him for three days. They took him for, for so. For I think the... our boy B certified got it. Then B certified was yeah. the technically number one for the hero race. He did the all of his games. One. The legitimate champion. He did all of his games in PvP. Uh, we also got the three million. Reputation or experience that needed to be gained. So all of oh. us will be getting. I said Blizzard. I meant Epic banned him. I apologize. Oh just, my God! Did you just do, it's, see, guys. It's because I do a Heroes of the Storm podcast. And you played Overwatch. Yes. And so uh, what I meant was Epic banned him from the game for three days. But the big thing is, is we got our three million experience. So everybody will get thirty thousand card points or thirty thousand reputation. Was it three? Thirty thousand card points. Thirty thousand card points. I hope you guys have a big yeah. Game. We'll all talking get, about those enlarger things in the pre-show. We'll all get thirty thousand reputation you to buy card packs. Dex enlarger. <laughs> oh. So congratulations to be certified. Also, um, well done, Epic, not allowing people to cheat the system. I think that was the big thing out of it is that they made a stand and said no, this doesn't work. Uh, but we we also got a patch today. Two seven point two came out. Ten brand new cards. I don't. Uh, have, which I already got one. I don't. Yeah. I don't even have the list pulled up in front of me. So I know well, some, bad. some of them are pretty bad. Um, some, some of them are, are pretty, pretty damn think, good. I think you're going to be interesting and maybe. Uh, pretty good. Yeah. Well, the weekly card pack this week is a Greater Drain, which Traders awesome. Traders Touch, which isn't that good of a card. Red Eye Nitro, which is garbage. And then we got some fixes. So, we banned. We banned, we banned Decker from our tournament. We sure did. Because of a bug. A lot of people were upset. Shane and I were both upset about it. We didn't want to do it. But it was too easy to exploit. It was too easy to replicate. And it was, it was, it was just a pain in the butt. It would have been a lot of work. So we banned her. So Epic said, hey, guys, we fixed the escape from Decker's containment fence. Yay. So can I elaborate a little bit? Yeah, but what I've heard is that's not true. I've heard that it's much more difficult to do, but there's still situations where it can be performed. Okay. I heard that it's not it, it's not as prevalent. Okay, it's more difficult to do. Um, I actually just, in the name of science, experiment tried to get out as twin blasts. Like tried to use his right click to get out, which was so easy to do. And it it, it, it knocked me right back in. It oh, perfect. Do do. Okay, it pulled me right back in, and I was very happy. I was like, right. oh, good. Um, I know Imsco came into my stream and said that people were exploiting it. Um, the so Punisher. I I, Imsco the Punisher. Sorry. Oh my god. Uh. 
and Bro to Kiss the Undertaker. <laughs> Anyways, uh, those are the nicknames I've given those two guys. So, for those of you wondering why we banned Decker because of this bug, uh, initially it was like, oh, we not, we're not going to ban a hero because of a bug that actually puts that it doesn't give her an advantage, right? That makes the hero weak. That makes that that lessens her strength. Like makes her balanced. Make it, yeah, makes her. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the reason we banned her is because it would have been so difficult to tell when someone unintentionally or intentionally abused the buck, because obviously, like Gorgeous Rising, we're the judge, jury, and executioner of all those things. The uh, you, me, uh, more specifically, are our great, wonderful admins who are great people. Yep. Uh, and help us run the event. Um, so there just would have been a lot of... I always want to give the teams and the players the benefit of the doubt that they're not going to do that, but I also am pragmatic enough to realize that there's going to be people who are going to do that. I accidentally and, and, and did it. And then use the veil of I, I unintentionally did it. Like, I understand that that was a possibility. And this the possibility of that just happening once in one game would throw a wrench into everything. Uh, and it was it just would have been extraordinarily difficult to be the like 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 I know there's a saying in law that it's better to let a guilty person go than it is to put an innocent man in jail sort of thing right so it just would have compromised the competitive integrity of the match too much and so we said you know what it's it's too much of a it will create too much problem and we just got rid of it we did we said nay and I think it was a good decision um but she'll be back for Gorgeous Rising 7 because it is, it's much difficult now, much more difficult now, and hopefully it'll be fixed by then. We've been about two weeks. Uh, another, another big thing coming out of Epic today was Address, or not today, coming out last week, the 24th, I believe, uh, addressing match length. They know matches are uh, much longer now. Uh, not much longer, but but ten to fifteen minutes in some cases, and for me, that's that's how a much huge, longer is that actually? That's ten to fifteen minutes. That's that's a lot. When I was finishing, used to it finishing match. It takes me match, longer to fold my laundry than that. You should fold faster. When it, when I was used to playing matches that were were thirty five to forty minutes, and now they're fifty to sixty minutes. That for me, it, it just adds right. just a little bit too much. I time. agree. I was just being um, devil's advocate. Yes, I know you are, but you're wrong. So <laughs> they're adjusting some things. They're making some adjustments, which this is uh, this adjustment I don't agree with. When a team loses an inhibitor, waves will now spawn two super minions instead of one. After 40 minutes, teams will get an additional super minion, so three. Ugh. So, let's talk about this. Ah. With that being implemented, with still no way to reactivate your inhibitors. It's game which, over. Which, which Super Steve talked about, and, and, and I'm, glad they, I'm glad he addressed this because a lot of people, including yourself on the previous episode, talked about this. We're not too happy that they implemented the orb prime changes and the inhibitor changes without implementing the ability to turn in the orb prime defensively and reactivate your inhibitors. And he basically said it wasn't ready to be implemented. There was too many bugs. We just wanted to get it's early access. We needed to get this out there to see how the players are going to, you know, test the game length and, and do this. Find the numbers, right? Right. Find the numbers. Do the, do the, do the math. Do the science. And figure out what needs to be tweaked from there. Because this is early access and this is what we're signing up for is to essentially be the uh, the, the double blind the participants, testers. if you will. Exactly. Um, so I feel like that problem which Epic has already addressed that they know is a problem with the inhibitors not being able to respond because it just grants so much map control that and they didn't they didn't give us a date when the defensive inhibitor mechanism is going to be implemented right. i'm all I, ideally ideally i, I would re i'm really going to like this when the defensive inhibitor mechanism is implemented yes and i hope i sincerely hope that when that the one with this patch that will come but he there there was no a, a mention of that no there was there was a mention of we know it's not in there we did this intentionally but there was no follow-up of expect to see it soon or or expect to see it not soon or any 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 even the most ambiguous sign of any sort of time frame so right. we literally have no idea when it actually is going to be implemented so for me i feel like this is a good change once that's implemented kind of what you said uh but until then it's it's an obnoxious change and it makes the game more snowbally now more snowbally when this occurs than it is right now at this moment in time 
Yeah. Another thing they did was adjust the, and this is why it's going to get more snowball y, because hold on, hold on. They adjusted the tower payout and health, more payout, and I believe it's less health. Last hitting a tower now causes the coins to fly to the killer. So instead of them dropping on the ground, I, I don't mind this change. It's very similar to minions. Last hit gets 100%. The person who assists gets 100% before they fell to the ground. Now that's not right. the case. They increase, increase the Prime Guardian card power reward. They lowered the tower damage per shot scaler. They flattened it so it's not does, there's not as big of a spike. They decreased the global team card power drip. Naturally increases the percentage of card power coming from player performance like last hits, player bounties, towers, and harvesters. And they add an additional card power into player performance. So, more card power. Our armor both... Uh, Wait, t- I'm, I'm a little lost. So, before... Elaborate on that. Bef- I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little lost on what the hell you just said. Before, depending on the people that were around you, mm-hmm. like, you, there, was, there was a certain amount of, of a little bit of additional as the game went on. Uh, bounties, for example. Player bounties, they, they... So, as the game went on, you got more card experience for kills. Right, and now okay. the, they've increased those. I don't so, mind that. I, I, it makes it a little bit more snowball in my opinion. I mean, yes, it's a little bit more of a it catch does, up, but if also, you're behind, it also conversely, right? If you're behind, then it's per, then it's okay. Yes. I actually think that's more that that makes that's that's stronger of a combat mechanism than it is a snow. I, I actually think it favors the. That, team yeah, the that's not the snowbally part. It's the other stuff of like the prime guardian card experience because the guy that goes to prime guard. Is normally the team that's ahead. This uh, is true. The, that, the, that's a good point, especially if you have an inhibitor down. Right. The adjustment of the payout for towers and health. Those are, if you're ahead and you're able to take two or three of those, you're going to give yourself more of a lead. Um, this is the one that I'm actually not a fan of at all. At, at all. I think this is a terrible decision. Uh, armor of both types mitigates tower damage. I love this. I hate this change. How, how boring were the games before teams were able to dive towers? How boring were the games? It was just Grux would eventually land a smash and grab and someone would die. Outside of that, no one was dying because no one could dive towers except Rampage. I just, I, I, fe- I don't feel like this is the right... I think that's, pr- I, I think that's going to enable This pushes. is going to... This is going to enable pushes much earlier, and the game isn't going to be... We have to farm in lanes for 15 minutes before our rangers are farmed enough to push the wave fast enough and do enough damage to the tower before our wave dies. Our, we can actually... Our frontliners, Steel, Rampage, Richter, whoever it may be... Can actually tank the tower, and we and it and you're and you're also not going to feel as safe underneath your tower as you were before. This is a huge indirect buff to steel, by the way. This is a huge indirect buff to steel and rampage. This is because those were the only two heroes in the game that could reliably dive towers but, with their with their ultimates. But they make it but easier other, now. Th- I'm okay with that. I I'm, that means we're going to have earlier action. There's going to be action. There's going to be earlier tower pushes. And there's going to be earlier kills underneath towers. And Dude. rangers are going to have to play much more smarter. And again, this is another, I feel, because the action will be much, will be happening much more earlier in competitive play. This is a buff to early game emphasis heroes, a.k.a. casters and fighters. So I'm perfectly okay with that. I invite this change. This is, because of- I, I am, uh, I am on, I'm, I'm very, on, I'm, I'm really on the fence with this change. Really, really on the fence. I love um, it. I think it's needed. I don't mind being able to push towers quicker. I don't mind that. What it, what it, what the issue I have with it is, is that tier two towers and inhibitors they don't do enough damage as it is. I agree with that. And now Here's as I build thing. my hero and I get my hero more tanky, I don't yes. need a minion wave. I don't need whatever it is. I'm just going to die the tower and push it. But yes, right. Um, I'm not going to be able to take an inhibitor without taking tier two. But but uh, it, so uh, what I would like to see because that's actually I I I. I well, how I felt about this was, I think tier one towers were too hard to take, and the rest of the towers were too easy to take. Right. I think they need to rebalance the health and scaling. I like the change, but they made them the weaker. The early game. I, I, the tier one towers. I like the tier one towers are going to be more are going to be not as difficult to take. But I don't like. I feel like that change should have like I don't know. I feel like the the damage difference and the health difference between tier one towers and all the other towers need to be balanced out a little bit a lot a, a lot tier one towers need to be easier to take and the rest of them need to be more difficult they to need take. to get harder as you, as you get to those significantly those harder but significantly. and this just makes them easier this just makes it when i'm at yes. 35 card points and i've built two damage mitigation cards i'm just going to walk under the towers any one of my front liners that i play and i'm just going to destroy it yeah i agree i um, think i think i think this isn't 
while I'm sure Epic, this isn't their final approach to this solving this problem, it, it's I feel a good... like it's not. I'm sure it's, this isn't like okay, they're done. This is how the towers are going to be. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Again, I mean, especially with the post we're just talking about, how they're always adapting and looking at what works and what doesn't. Right. Um, I think ideally the best case scenario is tier one towers need to be just a little bit easier to take. I think, not not a whole bunch, maybe just a little bit easier to take, and the other towers need to be harder to take, especially inhibitors. Inhibitors, I think inhibitors are too easy. I think I think inhibitors need to be. You have to have a significant advantage. In order to take them, so I, or you have to have like two sixty max card rangers pushing down the lane, or I want to talk me. about a, a change that I've never heard of. This is something I was thinking of, but we watched it in Agora's Rising. We watched teams take the Prime Orb Carp, they activate it, tier two towers inhibitors just melt. There's, there's, it's very yeah. difficult to mount like, a you defense. You cannot defend it. You can't. It's literally impossible. You just back up because it's going to take one or two rangers to shoot it four it times in a town. Yeah, it takes like three or four shots. So I mean, from a twin blast, he literally hits it four times and it's dead. And I, and then the, that security blanket you had of oh hey, I'm underneath my inhibitor, it's not there I'm underneath my tower, literally is no longer a factor. And now that's completely. And, and so gone. there is no defender's advantage. It, it completely. Not only does it grant the offensive team a huge offensive boost, which is which is what it should do. That's what it's there for, right? right. Like I'm okay with that. Um, but it, it completely str also strips away the team's security blanket of having a defender's advantage. When the prime card is activated, and even after, and, and I think in the late game situation, when everyone, uh, when your rangers all have 60 card points, uh, that there is no security blanket of your towers anymore. There's just, the towers are not strong enough to make, to deal with the amount of damage that is being put out. And I think there's a, that's a really big balance problem that I think needs to be addressed prior. That's another thing as we talked about earlier in the show, that needs to be addressed prior to open beta, ah. is the balancing of the towers. There needs to be a defender's advantage. Like, that's... Th that way you can't just push a tower arbitrarily and get right. away with it, right? right. Like, you need right. to be smart about it. You have to be, okay, we're gonna push the tower because we have advantage A. Right. Right. Other, obviously, the prime card is the, mo the big one of the biggest advantages you can have outside of killing your opponent. But I think I mean, that's what the prime orb like, should be used for, is, is instead of giving you that ability to do 300% right. additional damage... Instead, you activate the Prime Orb, and all it does, it still gives you that huge boost of fighting against heroes and, and still annihilating heroes. I think maybe it shouldn't increase the damage of structures. I don't think it should do that. I think that needs to go away. That's Yeah, that's... I think that would be a great way of approaching it, is the, is, is heroes still take... See, heroes they, are still... You're still scared. It increases your damage the exact same amount, but only specifically to heroes. To heroes, and, and yeah, yeah, it doesn't that affect That way you towers. still have a defender's advantage when yes. you're underneath a tower and an inhibitor. Then it's literally not this just... Well, like we just gotta fight thunder somewhere. Like yeah. you, 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 you aren't like ugh, I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's one of the changes that need to come to the, those particular cards is they don't do additional damage to to structures. Some people may disagree with that, um, but I, I feel like that would make the uh, just a little bit more balanced when it comes to activating the prime card. Yeah, I still I think agree. you should body heroes. If I have the prime card activated, you're not going to want to fight yeah, me. You're you probably point, yeah, if you're you probably still going to lose a tower. You're still probably going to you're, you're still going to be afraid of me, but you're not going to fight me and I'm just a little bit more cautious when diving yeah. that tier 2 tower after turning a prime in unless I'm able to have which with the changes they're making to towers it's just going to be a frontliner is going to be able to go in there and easily tank that stuff now. Yeah, so it doesn't actually really be matter. worse than what it was before. Yes. I think, and, and backdoor protection needs to be like, like, like you, you can, you can have, you can literally have four Rangers all at 60 card points, all up the prime card, and they still should be. I mean, this is my opinion, but I, and then like they still will have a hard time taking the tower. Like, I think that's how strong backdoor should be. Yeah, towers definitely. I, need I, to be I do not like how, how in the late game situation, backdoor protection is almost a complete non factor. It's almost a complete non factor. Yeah. So, guys, that was the news for this week. Um, the news we thought you guys needed to hear about. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump in. And Shane and I, are, after playing point two seven, after casting a tournament and having a chance to really test out all of the new stuff implemented to Paragon, we're going to give you our thoughts. We're going to tell you how we think the game Whoa. has improved. What just happened? No, when did they change the icon for uh, the Netflix app on the iPhone? I, I, why are you looking oh at Netflix? Oh my god, it looks so much. I didn't. I, I was like, what is this app on my phone? Guys, professional right now. This water? Oh my god. So we're going to talk about point two seven. Shane, I'm going to let you start. Guys, look at it. Look. Hold on. Let me show chat. I, really? That's what we're doing right now? Look. Look. At, look. That, it's right, that's it right there. This guy. Guys, it's I that apologize. In. I can't control when this. When did they do that? I can't Anyways. control this. I can't control this. So, so 
Shane. I really want to call you Seth, by the way, because I know you're just name call is me Seth. Shane. So there's no confusion. I know, Shane. Tell us your thoughts on point two seven. You've had a week to a couple weeks, week and a half to play. What what are your overall thoughts? What do you think the overall strengths and weaknesses are of, of this particular patch? Ninety five percent amazing. Overall, I am so blown out of the water by how great this patch was. Okay. Uh, other than things we already talked about, prime orb thingy. Uh, the the prime orb decker and tier one towers are too hard to take. Other than those three big factors, I think the game, as far as hero balance goes, is in the best spot it's ever been in. Um, not that there's still heroes who need certain tweaking. Right, both, absolutely. Both, on both sides of the poles, some heroes need a little downscaling, some heroes need a little love. Uh, but, but I mean, other than maybe two or three, I think maybe, what, like, three, four heroes? I think all the other heroes are pretty viable. Um, every single one of the rangers, we saw every single one of the rangers see plenty of play. Yep. Like fairly even play with the exception of Twin Blast. Who got banned a lot. Who got banned a lot. Um, uh, as far as fighters go, we saw Rampage, we saw Grux, we saw Richter, we saw Steel, we saw... Did we see anything now? I don't think we did. Not any of the games we casted. But, which, I think if Grux ever got banned, Fingmao would probably be the next fallback. Either that right. or Rampage. Right. Um, so there's a large variety in fighters. Um, but the support thing was kind of screwed because Decker was the best hero in the game who was banned because of a bug, and Muriel, who's the worst hero in the game, no one was going to play regardless. Right. So the support pool, and the fact that there's only two supports in the game, well, we have how many fighters, and how, we have four rangers, and what, like six? Uh, is the stream just crap? No. Uh, like six or seven uh, fighters? So I'll, I can't think off the top of my head how many fighters we have, but we have a lot. I think this game... Really, really, really need supports, like, right away. Uh, another thing, before going to open beta, we need at least four, uh, a total of, at least four supports. Preferably more like six. And we're not going to see that. But we're not, I know we're not going to see that, but... We're not going to see that. Um, so, overall, I mean, you're, you're, it's, it's a good change. Yes, overall, I love the patch. What? It's an amazing patch. It's, uh, uh cumulatively damn good job. Yeah, I'm, I'm same way. I mean, this patch we saw, I feel like it's added it's added a, a skill level, a higher skill level to this game. Who can farm more effectively, especially with junglers? I feel like if my team has the better jungler, if my team has the guy that's, that knows when to rotate, that knows when to pick up ganks, and I see my jungler doing his job effectively, I, I feel like we can't lose. You know who I think was the standout jungler? this tournament Who? by a large portion. Who? My boy Cell Wong. That dude in the early game was always exactly where he needed to be, right where he needed to be there. Will you stop and being... when he and when he and when he wasn't there, he was in the jungle farming. Will you stop being so freaking biased to triangle formation, Shane? Oh jeez man, people need to get over that. <laughs> uh, uh, when, since when did pointing out objective facts turn into favoritism? It's, it's like, favoritism um, ridiculous. 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 So for me, for me with this with this patch, there we talked about the prime orb not activating uh, inhibitors. It's a major misstep on Epic's part. The fact that it's not in yet, I understand the reasons behind it. So thank you that they didn't put in a buggy broken system. Yes. Um, yeah, I would rather them not implement it than than put something give me, in like that. Yeah. Than, because imagine if we had to ban, if we had to say like, guys, you can't turn the orb prime in defensively. Like how messed up would that be? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think overall they made the best decision. Yeah. I 100%. Um, I think that was a smart decision. I do feel like there's a lot more bugs that have that were, were visible with this patch, especially with Decker. Uh, I've never seen a hero so buggy. Um, so yeah, but but overall, I feel like this patch is was is a step in the right direction. A huge step in the right direction. And I am excited for what Epic is going to do in the future. One step for Selwonk. One giant step. Uh, ha, ha. But I want to talk about your favorite hero now, Shane. We gave you a little bit of insight of what we thought in the chat. <laughs> we have very... Notch, what's so cool about you and I and our relationship is you and I have so many polarizing different opinions on so many different things from in-game stuff to political stuff to even personal stuff. Uh, but we're still such good friends. Uh, let's, That's so cool to me. Let's, That's so cool to me. Let's talk. Let's That's talk. also why we're good co-hosts is because we... 
we great we create great dialogue between the two of us. But anyways, continue. Let's talk about your favorite hero, Chimera. Was oh, he, he... such a bad hero? Shut dude. up! Such a bad hero. So Chimera entered Agora. Anytime you have a melee hero whose ultimate is more of a disable on you than it is on the person you're using it, that right there is a big problem. Let alone the fact that his 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 uh. Hold on, I had it pulled up here. I had all his abilities pulled up, and I think I actually X out of it. His Q, his auto attack speed buff, re like, uh, oh, oh god. His, his health regen passive, other than jungling, is like useless a majority of the time. So, uh, like, by the time if you if you start a team fight with the health regen at zero, right? By the time you have enough health regen to where it actually is like noticeable in a team fight, especially in the late game, you're probably already won or lost the team fight. It's not a factor. It's great for jungling and like doing the orb prime, which is a gimmick and never will never be allowed in a competitive scene. No Chimera is ever going to be able to sneak out uh, orb prime harvester against any team who knows what they're doing. Um, it's it's not a factor in team fights. I feel like unless you already like we're pushing a wave and like we're like like that weird situation. Like maybe in certain situations it'll be cool, but for the most part, I feel like it's just simply. I've had the not really, when it, when five on five team fights. That I'm talking about maybe in like small skirmishes. There's a benefit to it, like 2v2s and, like, uh, obviously 1v1s. I think he's maybe one of the best 1v1 melee fighters in the game. Like, if, if him and another melee are fighting and they're even, like, even then, I still think he gets beat up by Grux. Even then, he probably gets beat up by Feng Mao just because of his burst. I've never Feng. I've never lost the 1v1 but, to Grux or Feng Mao. Um, well, you haven't played me yet, bro. Bro, um, let's do this! I'm down. Agor is dying. Let's we'll do about, this! I thought Agor dying at the, at the <laughs> after Um... I don't know. I think he. I think he's the. I'd rather have a Severog than a Chimera. Oh God. Now, Ugh. with that being said, two of the pro uh, the aforementioned problems have been resolved. I one. Only one. Only one. one. Oh. oh. Only I one. Okay. The the wind up. So so we'll, let, let's talk about his abilities. We'll talk about the issue with his Q a little bit more. Uh, so Chimera is his recommended role is a jungler. I would put him up as one of the best junglers in the game. Oh, yes. His ability to jungle other than Rampage is great. Yes, yes. I agree. Uh, he's a melee fighter. Physical damage. Difficulty is intermediate. And I think that's because you had to combat his bugs. Um, affinities are Fury and Growth, uh, which I think is fantastic, by the way. Affinity, uh, uh, Fury and Growth for this hero, they just fit perfectly. So many people were saying uh, growth and intellect, which was just it was in misinformation <sighs> provided by a certain person who were named nameless. Uh, that I think was it was very irresponsible of this person. Th but that's what he was. Information that he did not know was true. No, 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 no. no. Really irresponsible. That's what he was at the event. But were they not informed that that was incorrect? They were told they weren't allowed to talk about it. Then why was he talking about that's, it in the first place? I know. That even more shines a problem on this person. That was very irresponsible. I, I cannot. Other than that, I like this person. So do I. Great person. Um, but let's talk about his abilities. Uh, ability hack. Chimera swings his axe, dealing physical damage. Like how, much of a, how much of a betrayal of Epic's trust was that? For anyone, for anyone to go after Epic's Epic, I'm assuming didn't have them sign an NDA, or else they'd probably be suing them right now. No, you do. You have to. At any of the events, you have to. So wait, some they they sign an NDA. And you have to put it publicly at, at every event. If you ever go to Epic headquarters, you have to sign one. I hope wish, man. A hundred percent, you have to. I hope they invite me out there soon, dude. Epic, please. I've signed two, when I went to the community event and I went to the dev live stream. Uh, yeah. But anyways, uh, the ability ambush Chimera leaps to a target enemy hero, briefly stunning that hero and dealing physical damage in a small area around him. Unleash Chimera. This this ability for me, and I'm hoping with the fix tonight, this ability becomes better, because the issue with this ability is the bug. Uh, Chimera gains max attack speed for the next five seconds, or five attacks, whichever happens first. The card damage scaling of his ability increases with the ability's level. So the card damage scaling, they make it the card damage less. So at at max level, the card damage scaling isn't a hundred percent because then it would be absurdly overpowered. But they fix that. They, they change. They, they make that so that's not the case. But there was an issue with this ability. So if I was mid swing, and I'm I'm swinging away, I'm doing my thing, and I hit Q, he stops swinging. He and freezes. He pauses. It's so. And it only happens if 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 you're moving. If you're moving forward while you do it, it doesn't do it. But if you're sitting still, it does it. Like it's weird situation. If you're not attacking and you hit Q, it's perfectly fine. But if you're mid attack. 
It automatically resets yeah. everything. It resets the cooldown and all of it. And then he's, he he pauses for a second, and then he goes back to swinging. It's stupid. They said they fixed it. I haven't had a chance to play him as of recording this episode, but I will be playing him. Tonight I tried, to but that. everyone kept taking him because they because he's a good hero. His ability is spirit regeneration. Oh, no, 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 wait. Did, How? Did, he did, said a ha! Yay, yay, take, got him. Got him. Back. Got him. <laughs> His passive, Chimera gains uh, uh, Chimera gains stacks of temporary health regen when he lands base attacks on the enemy. Be careful saying passive. Passives don't exist anymore. His... You can level an, his ability that is passive. Right. His his ability. His his yes. So you level up the ability and passively he gains these stacks when attacking. It's not a passive like we saw before. Um, and then his ultimate, which this we're going to talk about this, and I'm going to bitch about this too. It's called Cole. Chimera selects an enemy hero after a brief channel, which seems like seven and a half days. He roots and deals physical damage to that hero. This is his biggest problem. He, this is his biggest problem. He pushes away and slows all other enemies. So which this, is cool. this is what we're going to talk about right now because I feel like this ultimate ability is absolutely amazing. It does a his hit is awesome. I love it. Yes, yes, I agree. It does a ton of damage. It has a root and it knocks people away. Like way the freak away so good almost drops an f-bomb way away so good like, it's not it's not like a decker all where you hit the wall and like eh, if you were like Poo, like yes away. yeah the issue is you have to cast it yesterday for it to go off today yes the issue is you have to actually cast it that's the issue with this ability in order to, the <sighs> issue with this ability is that you have to use it <laughs> i've had so many people where i've run up to him or i've i i, I used his his ambush ability and i leap on the target which is supposed to stop them for a second okay and then all of a sudden you you do the call and they're in sprint and they've got away from you you're like wait yeah. a second where did you and go by the time you're out of the animation and there. you're able to move so severog on his ultimate he has a little bit of time where he can't use his abilities after he ults but he can still move around he's he's not rooted in place he's not rooted in place that's the biggest problem it's a melee fighter who is much more of a damage dealer than he is a tank because there's kind of two subclasses of fighters your tanks and your like bruisers who are your like your fang mouths your gruxes and your camaros right and then your tanks are your rampage your steel your richter stuff like that um for a hero who is their main impact in team fights is less on the absorbing damage side and more on the doing damage side of the fighter spectrum right that it literally is it you're better off in most team fights. There's certain situations where it might secure kills or something like that. I don't cast it unless you know I, I know somebody's going to die. Exactly. In which case, you're probably going to steal that. Cur Most of the time, you're probably going to still like still kill that person anyway. And then get but some. By the time you're <laughs> out of the anime, like let's say it's a Murdoch, and you you got him to use his knockback, and you got you kill secured. He used his knockback. You jumped on him. You're wailing away on him. You're like, all right, sick. I'm going to kill him. So I'm going to alt him. And it doesn't, it, maybe you misjudged it or you don't realize how bad an ability it is, so you use it when he's at like 30 or 40% HP. And then you're like, wait a second, why is he that far away from me? Yeah. By the time you're done using it, the Murdoch is already not only creating distance between you and him, he's also hitting you. Shooting you in the face. Or you are able to hit him. Those, that, 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 that right there is why I think this hero is so. I could deal with the auto attack reset. Oh, that was easy. Me? It took like, me, it okay. took me one minute to figure out how to deal with it. It's a huge, huge problem. And I also wish his, his passive ability had something else other than what it does. I, maybe it, there was some other utility. I would have liked movement some, speed. But, I would have liked movement speed. Yeah, you got to be careful. Movement speed on a, on a melee I know, gear. that's hard. It's a tough one. They did it with Grux. Grux had it with his ultimate, and it made Grux yeah, super overpowered. But maybe, like, I don't know. There would be some, maybe some, like, lifesteal or something. or I don't know. Anyways. Minus uh, his ultimate. Let's take it. Let's let's not talk about his ultimate, but his overall kit, w with the supposed fixes to his Q ability, this is a good hero. He has yes. great affinities. He has access to some absolutely incredible deck building potential, mm -hmm. especially growth. I love that yes. Uh, you, you can build tanky like Hunter's Guile, Thorn Greenweave, Spike and, Boneplate. Uh, Spike Boneplate are great, great, phenomenal cards on this. Yes, yeah. you can still get your damage. You can still, you can still do all of those things, and you can still be uh, defensive. Um, but minus the wind up on his uh, his ultimate, or minus the wind up and the animation on Cole, which is just way too long. It's like Gideon. I, I I was comparing it to Gideon, when Gideon would come in and then he would he would do his like ah oh, I'm about to 
I'm about to do damage. Um, have, that reminds me of an old World of Warcraft inside joke or a thing that happened to me once that I won't talk. I'll talk about in the after show because it's too obscure of a thing to talk about it in the live recording. But it's but, one of the funniest thing that's it's one of the funniest things that's ever happened in my life. Anyways, carry on. But that's what it reminds me of. There's just too much of a build up before anything happened. And people are able to yeah. walk away from it. Things are happening. And so, other than his ultimate ability, overall, I feel like... like a ballerina just now. Did, you like... You like I was, that was his ultimate. That was... Oh. Gideon would be like, oh, and then he'd finally do it. And he's like, oh. He looked, he looked like gold dust. He looked uh, like gold oh, Remember him? Yes, would, I love he gold dust. The, he would do that weird, creepy thing, and then he'd punch people in the balls or something. Gold dust yeah. was my favorite. Uh, but uh, overall, I like this hero. I'm 10-0 and 0 with this hero. I have uh, done very, very well with this Which, hero. Which, like, that is so crazy. I, I have annihilated with this hero. Um, I don't build any attack speed. We're going to talk a little bit about building. Build attack speed on. We all were like, oh, attack speed. Attack speed's going to be great. It's, it's, garbage it's, it takes away so much from him. You're so wrong on that guy. Um, I don't build any attack speed. I go pure, like, damage. Pure uh, physical damage. Damage and survivability, I think. So I'm going to go. Oh, well, so survivability. And then my last card, I do a little bit of lifesteal. Um... Right. Uh, it's always good to have lifesteal. Yeah, and, and that's because of his Q ability, and yes, the scaling on it, but... Uh, and he's one of the heroes that I don't... I try not to sell my... Um, my pot on, my health pot, at all. And and it's strictly because of the, the wind-up and the build-up of his uh, spirit regeneration. So when I go and engage in a, in a uh, team fight, I will start swinging, I'll hit my Q, and I'll pop my health... And I'll, and now I'm at 26 or 24 health. That's a good idea. Right so it kind of it gives you a little like it gives me that breathing build up to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then by the time my pot falls off, I'm I'm above where You're I was hungry originally. Yeah. And you got a dry mouth and yes, exactly. So by the time my pot wears out, wears off, I'm I'm at where I sh I would have been, and I'm I'm actually being useful in team fights. You could say that your high, your health regen is high. Yes, you could say by that. By the time your pot's worn off. That's okay. true. That's true. You could say that. Um. So I I me and Shane completely differ from this. Um, I, I think once his alt is fixed, and and the, uh, here's the other thing, he's the only fighter, and this is a this is a pretty this is a little uh, quip at uh, Twitch chat during a Gorgeous Rising. He's the old, <laughs> he's unable to create distance between him. He doesn't have a getaway. I don't think he needs every one. other fighter, other than Richter, who Richter makes up for it through other ways. He's the only other fighter that. Here's the thing about Richter. Richter doesn't need to be in melee range to be impactful because he has a hook at his ultimate. Yeah. The only way that this hero can be doing anything in a team fight is if he's in melee range or someone. Richter doesn't have to be. He can be sitting back throwing hooks, throwing hooks, throwing hooks. Right? I don't think um, he needs so an escape. I, I'm glad that Richter doesn't have an escape because he he's good both. He, he's he's useful both in ranged and in melee. Right. Um, well, this hero, if he's not melee, he's not getting anything done. So he's other than Richter, he's the only fighter who doesn't have an ability to escape. I would like to see his right click, his uh, his leap. I would like to see that instead of it being hero targeted, being a more of a skill shot on the ground, similar to, like like that sort of thing, like a little a little ground reticle, like like on Gideon's Q, a little ground reticle that shows you where you're going to land and you have to predict the movement of the hero, so you can use it both. Uh, it, it, a it adds a little bit of skill cap to him, because other than knowing when to initiate, I don't think there's much of a skill cap to him. There's really not. He's not an um, intermediate. So it, it would make him a little bit there. There'd be a little bit more. Uh, it would raise a skill cap on him, and also it would give him an escape that I think he really needs to be if you ever I think if we ever like want to see him picked at the same have the same priority of picks as uh the other fighters who have one Rux Feng Mao who are the two big ones right now um that I think he need, I think that's crucial either either they need to give him that or they need to make it so when he does latch on to someone he can do a shit ton of damage really fast I don't think he needs an escape I think he does. This is where I will, I, like, like. I think he does. I, I, I feel like it would make the hero too, too easy. And again, we, we talk about with us. I mean, that, I mean, what, what, what makes, what makes those abilities? It's okay a commit. On Rux? It's a commitment makes, issue. It is a commitment issue. But what, what makes them? Why does Grux have a getaway? Why does Feng Mao have a getaway? Why does Rampage of all heroes ha uh, have a getaway? But why do we give it to another why one when we Severon already have, have it? I do because believe it's, because it's a crucial core of any foundational design of those type of heroes i do believe that that his leap is the fact that it's targeted is stupid i that drives me nuts it just takes it just takes all of the skill out of that ability i just get close and then i'm on top of you um 
which is how I've lived my life, really. If I can get close enough to anything, I normally climb on top of it. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> Dude, we are afraid. <laughs> Um, so, so someone had a good idea in chat. He said, "Take what I said and put it on a shirt." What, which one is... step for someone? <laughs> a giant leap for Paragon. When, when we start merchandising, which we're totally going to do in the future, we're totally going to do that. I'm just kidding. I have no idea. I'm, I'm joking, guys. I'm going to make that a shirt. Um, You're here first. It's going to be an Agora's dining exclusive. <laughs> uh, but I feel like giving him an escape. We talked about this is the same thing with travel mode. Um, is there's there's if you commit to something with this hero. I feel like you it's either it's all in or nothing. And if I if I well, use why the ability on just that hero, what what strength does he have to make up for the fact that he doesn't have an escape? I, he does. I, he doesn't do any more damage than if like at the same farm. Like the, he does comparable amounts of damage to Grux and Fang Mao. But it's his and even Richter, because Richter does a shit ton of damage. For me, and, and even Severog. Severog does a, a lot of damage, not as much as the other ones, but he also does a considerable amount of damage right. on his auto attack. And I just, I just, for me, it's, 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 this is what makes him intermediate Why? because it's about, it's about knowing when to commit and the proper way to do it. But that still hold that, that question still holds true to heroes with escapes as well. You still have to know when to initiate appropriately, right? This isn't, this isn't a get out of jail free card. Grux's escape isn't a get out of jail free card. Fangmail's, Fangmail's, uh, Reaper's Dash is not a get out of jail free card. And maybe it is in the early game. But in a competitive environment, there, if if, the, if you are low and in a bad situation, you're not going to be able to get away. Now, this may change with travel mode and things like this, but in the current state, in the current iteration of the game, I think it's vital to the health of that hero that he has that ability. And again, it's not it's not like it's a long range. It's not like it's not a very long range ability. It's maybe it's maybe a little bit longer. I don't even think it's 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 longer than auto attack or uh, range auto attack. It's not. So it, it's not like he'd be, it, it wouldn't be, it, it still would just grant him an ability. And what would be really cool is it means it would give him a leap. You could leap up from low ground to high ground, right? Which you can with, uh, I mean, the only way you can do it right now is if there's a hero there. With Rampage, you don't need a hero. With Thing Mal, I mean, with Grux, it's, you can't do that. But I mean, I you just, can speed. Grux doesn't need to uh, jump up because he just smashes and grabs you from the low ground. He just pulls you fixes, wherever you yeah, are. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, so I, I, I truly believe if they fix his ult and they get, make it so his, uh, his leap, is a targeted ability, which is a good, again, in summarization, making his leap a targeted ability is strong for twofold because it increases his skill cap and it also gives him a little bit of an escape mechanism so he can have a little bit more maneuverability in fights other than, I'm going to go kill this ranger and I die just... because that's what happens. If Grux smash and grabs, he can at least kill someone and get out. If Feng Mao can pop his ult and get out, they all have, I, th I think that's very crucial for him to have that. Or, I... or maybe falling back on the movement speed thing that could also be a sort of thing like right i think he needs something maybe his ultimate could give him some sort of like when he uses his ultimate he, he it, like decreases damage taken or something you know what i mean like he needs something to increase his overall uptime in team fights other than him leaping in and ulting and then sitting there and you're gonna die because that's literally in a competitive environment everyone's gonna focus fire him down and he's gonna die uh, maybe uh, i like this one make him jump to teammates or wards I could see that. Of, uh, that, like, that would be a good alternative. Right. I, I don't think it's as good as making it a target ability, but I think that would be a step in the right I just, I just don't like... I, there's something about the hero where I feel like with this, it's a high-risk, high-reward scenario. And I feel like if you take that away from him, you've just dumbed the hero down. But, that's, but, but that argument you're using is an argument you can use for literally every single other fighter. Every other single fighter can use that same argument. But they all, but no, it's because they all have escapes. I feel like there's no risk. It's because of, oh, I've screwed up. Now I, no, now no, I can no, just dude, get out. No, no, no. Are you telling me there's no risk as a Grux for you in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, situa in a 5v5 situation? It's a huge amount of risk for a Grux to try to, over, to, to try to extend past his smash and grab. Or for a Fang Miao, for a Fang Miao to use his Reaper's Dash to initiate into a team fight is a huge liability. It's a huge liability. Because then you just get focused. Even if you do go in there and use your uh, spike to secure a kill, you don't have any way to get out, and you're just going to die, right? Unless there's like a Muriel shield, which isn't going to happen because he's not going to be picked. Like I, I think it's, I, I, I really, really, really think it would be a good thing. Well, I disagree, and I think that's all I can really do is, is disagree. Um, I just, I feel like overall, there's, there are some, some issues with the hero. There are some things that need to be changed. With the hero, um, yes. hopefully the Q fix. Agree with that. We the agree ultimate with that. needs to be, but I feel like once we get some of those changes, I feel like this he will be a strong hero. I love the hero. I think the hero is fantastic. 
I think yes. he's one of the best jugglers like in the him, game. But he's so bad, I get mad every time I play him. See, and I've had the exact opposite where I've just annihilated people. And then I've had the opposite. Where I've, had, I've also had where I haven't picked him, and everybody's like, hey, don't worry, I know how to play this hero. And they go 1 in 17. <laughs> I feel like that actually happened. It did that actually happen. So, see? There's one happened last night. He went he went 0 and 14. Damn. And he, he told me, he said, he said, I'm so good, don't worry about it. Because I was last pick. The moment someone says, don't worry, guys, I got this in the draft, <sighs> is the moment you've lost. <laughs> That's the, you're like, oh, great. <laughs> it was an hour. It was my last game of the night. It was an hour. Dude, I've been going to sleep really early recently. I'm sorry I haven't played with you, man. I've been going to sleep at like 8 o'clock. You need like to knock waking it up off. at like 6 in the morning. You need to knock it off. It was an I hour. Love it. I love waking up early. Uh, you're out of your mind. It was an hour and four minute game. And uh, it was it was just such a cluster. It was such a cluster. I was just like, dude, like how did you go? And he's, he was building like all attack speed. Everything on him was attack speed. <laughs> I was like, you're yeah. not doing oh, this God. right. And he's like, I got it. I got it. I think all of us have suffered through that at one point in time. <sighs> at least once, a majority of us more than once. It drove me nuts. It was, he was the worst Chimera player. And I was like, this is why Shane hates Chimera. This is the exact reason Shane hates his hero, because of players like this right here. But he, he does need some work. I think once we start to see, especially changes on his alt, which for me is the biggest one. Once we see the change on his alt, I think we're going to. Uh, I think he's going to be played a lot more. Yeah, um, I agree. I think. Well, I don't know if he'll be played competitively, but I think his win rate, his, his win rate across the board, will go up. Yeah. So, guys, still, even with those changes, I still think Grux, Feng Mao, Rampage, Richter, Steel. I even think even with those changes, I I don't know. Maybe him and Sever on the same page. I don't know, but yeah. We will see. Only time will tell, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, that's all the news. That's all the stuff. We talked about everything we needed to talk about. I do want to take a moment, uh, and I want to say thank you to everybody who downloads this epi uh, these episodes on, on iTunes and Stitcher. You guys iTunes are amazing. You, you are so great. Um, Notch lied. He went 0 and 13. Give us some credit. I'm sorry, Brave. I apologize. Um, <laughs> I, I want to say thank you to everybody who's downloaded. that guy one more death. <laughs> I messed had. up. Um, we finished the game. He had 20, like 23 card points. We were all at 40. So... <laughs> Um, <laughs> get 23 card points. Whatever it was. He got a safety. Oh, okay, the the game true. was like, give him an extra card point. This is ridiculous. <laughs> he, he, he died underneath his own core. Yeah. So <laughs> they gave him an own. They gave him his own. <laughs> he had like, he was so bad. Yeah. Um, for those of you who have downloaded our last episode, Shane, we actually were almost to the 800 download are mark, serious, guys? which oh, would be our, our highest oh, downloaded crazy. episode. Um, crazy. And that's, that's just two is weeks. It? That's, it, wow. it came out two weeks ago, so the fact that we're there is pretty oh, insane. Uh, so thank you to everybody who supported this. Um, I, I am going to ask you guys a, a favor. We talk about it every week, but if you guys could head over there, take a few minutes, leave a review, whether it's a one- or a five-star review. We prefer the five-stars because it helps people find the podcast. Um, there's, I don't think, any other Paragon podcasts, and the way I, iTunes stuff is a little bit difficult if you don't have our name exactly. Uh, right, you're not going to find it. So if you head over there and just leave it a review, let more people know about this. Uh, we're going to be working on getting some guests back onto the show. It has been Shane and I for a couple weeks. Uh, I do have another guest We've lined up. We've just been so busy between the Paragon Masters and the Gores Rising yes. and personal stuff between Notch and I. We haven't been able to get another guest on here, guys, but we will. We uh, will. We, we will. We, we, I, act, I have one lined up we're going to be talking about. He makes awesome YouTube videos. Shane, I'll send you a link for him. I know who you're – I saw the email, yep. Um, but – to all of you that watch us live and catch us on YouTube, thank you as well. Uh, we do truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you guys want to get in contact with us, you guys can send, an e send us an email at agorasvoice at gmail.com. If there's anybody out there that, that wants to try and get into the tournament field and they want to admin or they want to help in any way, send us an email and tell us what you want to do. We've been getting a lot of emails. Don't, yes. We've been getting a lot of emails May that I? say, I, I want to help. Yes, go ahead. Don't email us and saying you want to help. Email us and show us how you're going to help. Right. Tell us. Because we get show us so or many. Tell us. Preferably show us, but we'll deal with, we'll, we'll accept. Right. Tell us without you're going to help. Which when, all... you, when you go to a job interview, you don't show up and say, not to say this is a job interview because it's, it's not. We're not, not paying pay you. It's volunteer. <laughs> but that's the type of people that we're looking for. That's, that's the type of commitment we're looking for, though. Um, just to give you guys an idea. Uh, not that level of commitment Notch and I have put into this because we've put more into it than 
We should have. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that, but it's much more than meets the eye. Um, um, but yes, we, we, we know there's people that want to get involved with us or with the community and with the game itself. But when, when we just have an email of, hey, I want to help, we have to know how. We have to know how to allocate. Or, uh, that's not the right word. We, we have to know how to, to what delegate. you delegate, thank you, uh, resources and, and, and get everybody doing what they're, they're good at. Um, but yes, you guys are fantastic. We love each and every one of you. You guys can also contact us on Twitter at Voices of Agora. Our Facebook page, Voices of Agora. Shane, tell the people of the internet where they can find you, my friend. You can find me on twitter.com forward slash ITG Shane Lynch. Everyone keeps asking what the ITG stand for. It's in the works. It, it, it's there for a reason, but... I talk to girls. You figured it out. Yeah! So many people have been coming to me like, say, does ITG stand for this? Does ITG stand for this? And like a lot of people have come up with like really clever stuff that I could be like, I can totally steal that and say yes it is <laughs> and use it. But I'm not. I, it actually does stand for something. Uh, yes, twitter.com forward slash ITG. Shane Goocher? Nope. Twitch. Nope. That's nope. TV. You're not Shane Goocher. Oh, it's God. It's not that. It's Son not a... that. This water so good. <laughs> it's not Shane ITG, Goocher. ITG, Shane Lynch. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash ITG, Shane Lynch, which I've been getting such a great... Uh, I've been having a good time on my stream, guys. I am streaming. The schedule time is Monday through Friday, noon to 3. So during that three-hour period, I will be streaming. I might be streaming earlier. I might be streaming lamer. Later, lamer. <laughs> I might be Please don't later. stream lamer. <laughs> uh, but guaranteed three hours of streaming time, Monday through Friday, between noon and three. More often than not, more than that. Uh, and stuff like that. So that's, that's where I want the most supporters on my Twitch. I'm trying to really get my stream going, and I've had a, a resounding success and resounding support. So for those of you who have been watching my stream, thank you. But to those of you who didn't know I had a stream, come down. We'll have a good time. Uh, we, we, we play Par We mostly talk about Paragon, but we, we cut our, uh, I, 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 we've talked about dating. We've talked about uh, a lot of cool medical stuff. We've talked about some, uh, not political stuff, but like government stuff. There's a difference. Uh, we, we talk about really cool stuff over on my stream. We share, when we share stories together, uh, everyone's welcome. So come, uh, come have a good time, not only with Paragon, but just whatever it is you guys want to talk about at any given time. Do that, folks. As for me... We, talk, we talked about Excited Delirium on the stream today. Look it up. It's really interesting. As for me, guys, you guys can find me six nights a week, Monday through Saturday, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash another notch, playing Paragon, lots and lots of Paragon. You guys can also find me online. PB&J. We talked to, also talked about PB&J. You, right. you guys can also find me on, on Twitter at Notch Plays Games and on YouTube at Another Notch Gaming. If you want to see our pretty faces, we do post Hello. VODs uh, of this recording plus Dude, I'm breaking out Rising. Like I haven't had it's, this many pimples on my face since I was like 16. It's because you don't put enough peanut butter on your sandwiches. But thank you guys, as always, for watching Ooh. and hanging Ooh. out and being part of Voices Ooh. of Agora. I see you. Okay. For all of you that continue to support this show, Thank you guys so much. We will see you guys next time in Agora. We're back, guys.